lethargic sloth here, and it's time to talk about Ukraine. Ukraine will be represented at Eurovision 2018 by Melovin with the song Under the Ladder. So what word would I use to describe the song? I'm going to say fiery. This song is dynamic or fiery. It makes a strong impression and it continues to burn in your mind long after you listen to the song. Or maybe I was looking for a cheap cop-out because I couldn't think of a much better word and in the national final there was a lot of fire in his performance. So either one of those two options, whatever you think my reason for using the word is, well, that's up to you to decide for yourself. Before I get started on my personal review, I think it's only fair to also let my girlfriend have her opinion out here uh, since she's from Ukraine. Uh, so she told me what she thought of the song, so I'm going to repeat it as close as to what I remembered what she said. So I asked her, do you like the Ukrainian song? And her response, it's a garbage song. So that's her review. Luckily, we don't always have the same taste in music, so I do not think this is a garbage song, and I will explain to you why. So here we go. So when I first heard this song, I kind of thought, man, that sounds a lot like Panic at the Disco. Uh, that's the comparison that I made to when I heard the song at first. I was absolutely blown away by that first impression of hearing the song. Uh, unfortunately, with the pronunciation, which I know has been gone over many times, uh, it was hard to understand what the song was about or the lyrics to the song because he was hard to understand. But as of Eurovision in concert, his pronunciation and diction have been so much better and you can understand clearly what he says for the most part at least I can so in doing this review I am throwing out most of my concerns about the pronunciation and going forward with what I heard yesterday at Eurovision in concert so what's good about this song Melovin, much like Alexander Rybak from Norway or Jessica Mauboy from Australia, has incredible stage presence and charisma. He comes off as incredibly likable or interesting to those watching his performances. Whether it's the stage mannerisms or the multicolored eyes, people are drawn to him. My girl, who is of course from Ukraine, told me that she watched something about Melovin where he was self-conscious about his eyes when he first started performing and that he was afraid of what people would think about this. But that's really a tremendous asset in the competition such as this. For one, it looks very cool. He almost looks like a magician up there. Kind of like if you take Chris Angel times the lead singer of Panic at the Disco and you've got Melovin. Second, he's completely memorable as a result. I think Melovin has a very strong voice. The tone and dynamics of his voice make him a powerful singer. He is also very engaging in terms of bringing the crowd in to the performance. The last chorus has a big moment that he can really showcase his voice towards the end of the song. This is the type of song that will get people wanting to vote. It will wake people up as it performs last in semifinal two. People will want to vote for this. Under the Ladder is energetic, dynamic, and engaging. I know the staging is going to be impressive, and that should only help further the cause. I love the staging from Ukraine's national final, and if it is anything like that or better, that could help lift the song easily to a top 10 finish, or even a win at Eurovision 2018. So what are some potential problems with the song? Obviously, Melovin's pronunciation and diction were issues going into Eurovision season after the national final show in Ukraine. I figured he would be able to fix many of those issues, and he seems to have done an admirable job up to this point. There are still some issues to fix, but it sounds much better now. 
at least I can understand him better as he sings. He still puts the wrong emphasis, much like Alexei from Belarus, on different parts of some of the words, but it's a much more solid performance now. He has drastically improved here, and it shows. You might not personally be a fan of this genre or different parts of this song. Lyrically, this is not the strongest song in the competition. The song is about a decision that needs to be made, but you might find yourself wondering what many parts of the song means. I guess that just depends on how much stake you put into lyrics versus entertainment value. We as reviewers have plenty of time to dissect all the lyrics and everything like that, but those listening at home on the night of the semifinals or the finals, they hear the song and then they vote for them, so they don't have as much time to analyze. A song like this should be able to win them over. We all have different values, too, for such different aspects in songs. You can make an argument that there's a lot of time dedicated to the oh, 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 and such. And being a Eurovision song, it needs more content in the chorus due to the time constraint of three minutes. Now, I enjoy the song, but in being balanced, that's something that I can address as a weakness to the song. It may or may not bother you depending on how you value songs. So what's my rating for this song? I'm going to give this song a 9 out of 10. I really enjoy this song. Sure, it has its share of problems, but I find it very enjoyable. It's actually one of the songs that I probably listen to more than a lot of the others this year. It's definitely going to be in my top 15, and it might just fall just outside my top 10. But it is one of my favorite songs of the year, and it could even rise. I think this is going to be very enjoyable live. I think he's going to bring an amazing performance. And this is going to be one of those songs that people are going to want to vote for. So... In my book, this is a song I can listen to going down the road or even at the gym or just passing time. I find it very pleasant, and yeah, I love his voice, love his charisma, and I think this is quite a good song for Ukraine this year. So is this song a contender or a pretender? This song is an absolute contender. March straight to the finals, Ukraine. You are definitely grabbing one of those spots. It doesn't matter what semifinal you're in. If you were in one or the other, you would be going to the finals. This is a quality song, high impact, high energy. And whether or not you know the lyrics of the song or what he's singing about, it's such a good stage presentation. And Melovin has such good charisma up there that that alone is enough to win over the votes. A lot of people at Eurovision don't have time to <clears throat> analyze the lyrics of a song. They see it for the first time on TV in their semifinals and or finals and they're like, oh, I really like that or oh, no, not for me. This song is an instant impact. You either love it or you're like, yeah, I don't know. So, this is going to be the type of song that's going to captivate a lot of people, draw them in. And with the amazing stage show that I'm expecting, that's just going to reel people in even more. People are going to flock to vote for this song. And I would be disappointed with anything other than a top 10 finish at Eurovision. And I do think this song could win the entire competition. Ukraine has been a country that's been doing very well since, well, since they've entered the competition, but specifically since coming back after 2015 and 2016, obviously, Ukraine won with Jamala, 1944, and then 2017, Otorvald came back and actually gave Ukraine its worst finish, but it was still a quality song and one that I really enjoy. I wasn't so much a big fan of Jamala, 1944. I can't deny that it had a lot of good qualities, but it just wasn't in my favorites. It was actually my around my number 16, 17 song of the year. But I can understand why people like it. You know, 
it's just not in my tastes. But Otor Vald last year, I really enjoyed them, actually. I thought they were very good, and they were constantly towards the top of my list. Uh, this song I like even better. So I think, actually, by year, 2016, 27, 2018, I've liked progressively the Ukrainian song better each year, in my opinion. So, yeah, I think this song has a great chance to do some amazing things. And Ukraine should be very proud of their entry this year. This is a legitimate contender to win. So we'll see you at Eurovision 2018. Ukraine, good luck. Thank you for watching my review of Ukraine at Eurovision 2018. I am trying to get the last couple reviews done, which are almost done, and then I'll start getting into my detailed analysis of Semifinal 1, Semifinal 2, as well as my Top 43. I will film a short video that just goes through the Top 43, and then I will film a long version of my top 43 that's probably going to be an hour of me talking about the song so yeah it's my longest video of the year but I really love making it so that's coming soon also have knockout game coming tomorrow that'll be April 16th actually it's tomorrow in Europe in a lot of places so today later on in the day and uh, yeah just look for more videos we've got a long way to go though Eurovision is coming fast, about three weeks. So for now, thank you for watching, and Lethargic Sloth, out.